I am blessed to be here. Amen? So, welcome to the afternoon service. If you want a very energetic people jumping around praise and worship, come to the afternoon service. The people here have a different level of energy compared in the morning. So, they transform in the afternoon for some reason. Welcome to the worker service, where the workers are all seated here in front of us. Enjoying the ministering of the Holy Spirit upon their lives. Amen. Amen. And to those who visited us, welcome to everyone. And to those who came back the second time, welcome to everyone. Amen. So before we got, get, get into the word, let's all be praying. Father, we thank you, Lord, for how beautiful and how wonderful it is, Lord Jesus, when your children come together in unity. Father, we thank you, Lord, because at this point we are here together. Lord, it may have been the whole day that we are here, but indeed, a day, Lord Jesus, in your presence is better than thousands elsewhere, O Lord. So we thank you because today we shall end this day hearing your word, being changed, being rebuked, being rebuked in love. And God, I pray for our hearts to really be cultivated, O Lord, so that your seed shall be sown properly. Anoint us tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. amen. And amen. Let's praise God. And let's pray that we get to finish tonight's preaching. Amen. amen. So, once again, good afternoon, everyone. So, we will be talking today about a topic entitled, Overcoming the Orphan Spirit. So, the next slide, it says there, Overcoming the Orphan Spirit. Amen. So, what is an orphan? An orphan is someone who has no father and has no mother. So, he is left parentless. So, he's left alone. So, in the Bible, we have examples of orphans. Who, who are the orphans that you know of in the Bible? You know Mephibosheth, who has no mother and father. You know of Esther, who has no mother and father. And the Bible tells us that these orphans, we should be taking care of them because God cares about them. So in, Prov in Psalms chapter 68, verse 5, it says there, Father of the fatherless and protector of widows is God in His holy habitation. So that's the very heart of God. That when God, when you will not, when you may not have your physical father and mother, God is assuring you that I am going to be your father because you will not be left as orphans. Amen. In Deuteronomy chapter ten, verse eighteen, it says, "He defends widows and orphans. He loves even the strangers living among us. He gives them food and clothes." So he, he, he will stand as a parent and at the same time, he will defend and provide for the widows and the orphans. In James chapter 1 verse 27, if you have it on the screen, it says, Religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless is this, to look after orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. So God has a compassionate heart towards these people who cannot be defending themselves, who cannot be providing for themselves. And we have to understand that at the time, in their culture, once you are a widow or you are an orphan, you will actually live without any provision at all. Amen? So that's why God is assuring that if you're an orphan, I am your God. I am your Jehovah. I am your provider. But we are not talking about those kinds of orphans. <laughs> because an orphan spirit is different from being an orphan. Because there are people that they are not orphans, but they are having an orphan spirit. So, Pastor, what is an orphan spirit? We will be discussing later on. Because in John chapter 14, verse 18, what does it say there? Was Jesus their father? No. no. But God, Jesus said, I will not leave you alone like orphans. I will come back to you. So it is not the goal of Jesus for us to have a, an orphan spirit because it is not his design. He said, I will not leave you like orphans. So what does it mean to be a spiritual orphan? This is not being without a father or without a mother. Spiritual orphan is a climate. It is a spiritual heart. It is an attitude. 
spiritual orphan is what happens when a person feels rejected, isolated, despite having parents, but seems to be deprived of love, affection, and care, thus putting them in a very sad state. Like you don't find your value. Like no one appreciates you. Like no one cares about you. Like you can be in the background. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Spiritual orphan is not having the identity of being a child of God, even if he is serving God. Spiritual orphan can come to church, but not really acknowledging that God is his father. But he acknowledges God as his master, which is not wrong, but not a father. He's seeing God as a boss, more than as a father. And the enemy wants that, that we don't know our identity. So we will look into the word of the Lord, wherein this is very familiar. When we, when we talk about Luke 15, what comes into your mind? Luke 15. Somebody said that I hear it. Prodigal. It's a story of the prodigal. But how many sons were there? Two. Two. But the more popular one is the prodigal son. Yeah? But the other brother is not highlighted at all. Yes. So we will not talk about the prodigal son. We will talk about the older son. So the highlight now will be on him. So let's read from Luke chapter 15, verses 25 to 31. The older son had been out in the field. When he came near the house, he heard the sound of music. What? My party. Aloha. Amen. There was a party. There was a celebration. Amen. So he called to one of the servant boys and asked, what does all this mean? The boy said, Your brother has come back, and your father killed the best calf to eat. He is happy because he has his son back safe and sound. Good news! There's a party inside the house. Come in. 28. The older son was what? The older son was what? Angry. The older son was angry and. He would not go into the party. Wow. So imagine it in your mind. From afar, from a little far off, he's been hearing all this merrymaking. Maybe he can see the smoke coming from the kitchen. Many people are coming in. Celebration and all that. I said, I will not come in. Yeah. I'm staying here. Oh, my good brat. So his father went out and begged him to come in. In Tagalog, Tampururot mode. Wow. Tampururot si Koya mo. <laughs> but he said to his father, Look, uh, look at this. For all these years, I have worked like a slave for you. I have always done what you told me to do, and you never, ever gave me even a young goat for a party with my friends. But then, this son of yours comes home after wasting your money on prostitutes and you kill the best gaffer. Mm. So unfair. So unfair. How dare you. So unfair. So unfair. His father said to him, so Oh my son, you are always with me and everything I have is yours. Amen. But this was a day to be happy and celebrate. Your brother was dead. But now, he is alive. He was lost. But now, he is found. So let's, let's turn off the spotlight on the prodigal son. We know his story. The story of coming back. But we get to see a story here of someone who might be in the house, but was never at home. Who was always serving, but not really acknowledging that it was his father because he was seeing him as his master. I was contemplating on what, what word to preach in the afternoon service, but because this is a quote-unquote worker service, let this be for us, because most of you here are serving, are working. It is my prayer that we don't have that orphan spirit in our lives. 
So what are the signs of an orphan spirit? Then we would know, do I have that? Again, this is not for us to be condemned if you have it, but an exposition so that it would be exposed because whatever is exposed can be changed. Amen? What are the six signs of an orphan spirit? Number one, orphan hearts live in. Orphan spirit lives in religious people. Pastor, when you say religious people, who are these people? Are they the people who are always praying? Because I'm religious. Always remember, you always say this. Christianity is never about religion. Christianity is about religion. When we hear the word religion, what does it mean? Religion is not a churchy thing. Religion is something that you do frequently. It's a part of your system. So for example, you can study religiously. If you're so intent and focused and consistent on doing that, that's religion. You can be going to the work religiously because you're always doing that. So that's why we should not have the connotation that we can only use the word religion when it comes to church matters. Amen? So why, why can we say that an orphan spirit lives in a religious person? Because these are not the people who are traditional churches. These are not those people who don't clap their hands on a worship service. You don't call them religious. They're not just that. They're not the people who have very long hair like Rapunzel and it would be a sin to cut it off. I don't mean about those people. Because this is what we mean. Religion is what is left when the relationship with God is non-existent. Because you still serve. You still come to church. You cook. You sing, you're in a ministry. But first and foremost, there is no relationship between you and God. It's just you serving. How do you know that you're being religious more than relational? It's this. When your ministry matters more than your personal growth, more than your spiritual growth, you would know that you're being a religious person when you have more time doing ministry than doing prayer. That's religiosity. You're so excellent in the way you serve. But when you look at your spiritual life, it's in balance. When your ministry does not is not equal to your character. You have a booming ministry, excellent ministry, but spirituality is time. When you can come to a ministry meeting, but find it very hard to come to a prayer meeting. Because prayer meeting is not a ministry. It is your relationship with God. When you have more ideas in your ministry, rather than an idea of how to talk to God. That's religiosity. Amen? Amen. Religion can happen to anyone. Whatever church you may be joining, religion can happen. Because religion will happen to anyone who loses a revelation of who God is. If you don't know God, there is no relationship. Because you cannot be in a relationship with someone you don't know. Amen? That's why a relationship, for it to be strong and founded, it's based on how you know each other. Amen? Amen. Hindi dahil cute siya, kapatid, kayo na. Amen. It's not finances, career. What else do you know about that person? Nothing. It's just a hat. So if that's the only basis of your relationship, it is bound for a failure. I am not releasing a curse, but that's how it is. Because if you don't know someone deeply, you cannot be in a relationship with someone deeply. Amen. That's why, kilalanin mo muna bago mo relasyonin. Amen? Clear? Nakagutan ka lang sa kanya, niligawan mo na agad. Kilala mo ba talaga? Tapos hindi naman pala mahal. Amen? Amen? 
because beauty fades. Clear? Beauty fades. So, Christianity is not a religion. Christianity is a revelation. You are a Christian not because you are born into a Christian family. You are a Christian because you have a revelation of who Jesus is and what Jesus is. Clear? Because, for example, God was just impressing in my heart. Like, how do we, why do we find prayer very, what do you call this, stressful sometimes? For example, you attend the prayer watch and you get to pray for an hour. What else will I say, Pastor? But talking to someone you're in relationship with, one hour flies too fast. But why is it when you come to prayer, an hour of prayer seems to be so long, you start closing your eyes and you say everything that you know, autopiloted in your head. God, you're you thought it was too long when you opened your eyes. Five minutes. <laughs> Fifty-five minutes more. What will I do? But if you know someone, you know how to talk to that someone. That's why Christianity is not a religion. Christianity is a revelation. Remember in Matthew chapter 16? It says there, Jesus went to the area of Caesarea Philippi. He said to his followers, Who do people say I am? They answered, some people say you are John the Baptizer, others say you are Elijah, and some say you are Jeremiah or one of the prophets. Then Jesus said to his followers, and who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. And Jesus answered, you are blessed, Simon, son of Jonah. No one taught you that. My father in heaven showed you who I am. He was not impressed with all the other answers. He was impressed to the answer of someone who really knows who he is. Always remember this. Your service to the Lord will not impress him as much as your knowledge and revelation of who he is. If there's something that you have to work on to as workers for the Lord, it's more than the ministry. It's your knowledge of who God is in your life. Because that's your revelation. That's the revelation that God is giving to you. The core of Christianity is revelation. You cannot be a Christian if you do not have a revelation of who Jesus is. And you cannot know Jesus if you do not have a revelation of who He is. That's why I build your intimacy with the Lord. Because you can appear to be a Christian by joining a church. You're all now part of Picture Lies. Your picture is there every single Sunday. But sadly, Christianity is not something that you sign up to. Christianity is something that you live with. And you live with the revelation of God in your life. Amen. Because you know what? Religion makes orphans. Relationship, it makes sons and daughters. Mm -hmm. Religion gives you, relationship gives you identity. Mm -hmm. Religion deprives you of identity. In the passage that we have read, we have how many sons? Two. two. We thought we only have one lost son. Yeah. But there are two <coughs> lost sons. True. One was lost in the world in the worldliness. One was lost in the field. True. I want to discuss how can you be lost in the field? One was lost rebelling. But the other one? Always present, mm. but lost. Mm. Always working, active in the ministry, doing everything, everything, everything. And that was his pride. But he got lost. Because you know what became the rival of God? The ministry. How can it be a rival of God? When your focus is on your ministry, not on your God. Because the overflow of your knowledge of God, that is ministry. Amen. 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 I thought this is the more lively group. Mm. We are so quiet again. <laughs> Ouch. Ouch. <laughs> One was lost in rebellion. The other was lost in religion. The older son was in the field, 
but not in the house. He worked for his father, but he did not know his father. Religion is man's attempt to work for God's gift of salvation, God's unconditional love. Religion focuses on man's effort to reach out to God. It's just like this. You would tend to do everything just to please God. And if you don't receive that applause, you are like the old son who will be angry and he will not get into the party. Because your only value is what you do for the Lord. Revelation is when Jesus becomes real. So real. He is not like real. He is real. Amen? Amen. That's number one. Spirit of religion. Um, orphan spirit is in the religious people. Sign number two. Orphan spirit brings out anger. 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 Luke 15, 28, it was clear said there. The older son was angry and would not go into the party, so his father went out and begged him to come in. He was so angry, he had anger, and for sure, it did not happen just on that night. It was an anger that started to build up until he bursted out. Because all of this time, he felt it's unfair. I stayed your son left. Your other son left. I don't deserve this. <coughs> Always remember this. Click. <coughs> Clear? Can you read it? Anger is one letter. Short from danger. Religious people are angry people. Angry people are dangerous people. Well, it is true, but Pastor, Jesus knows how to be angry. Yeah, I know. It's called holy anger. Because you should be angry at sin. You should not also be the, it's okay. Stand your grounds. The violence takes us by force. But is your anger a holy anger? Or is it an outrage? Is it an outburst? So there is something called holy anger. And how do you know it's an holy anger? Because even God knows how to be angry, but it is a justifiable anger because there's a valid reason for Jesus to be angry. And anger, if channeled to the correct reason, can be a natural response to injustice. But anger can also be an open door for the enemy. Yung lagi kang galit. Lagi na lang talagang galit. I mean, hindi ikaw yun. I'm the person next to you. Hindi ikaw yun. Because it can be, it can be, we can be angry. Amen? Oh, yes. Okay. Again. Okay. Listen up. Don't get me wrong when I said this morning that we correct in gently. Gently again is not on the manner of saying it. Like, I rebuke you, sister. Mm -hmm. so gentle. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that. It's a climate. Amen. Gentleness is a climate. You can be, you can be speaking in a high tone, yeah. but your words don't hurt. They heal. That's what we mean by gentle. Amen. Amen? Because you can be so soft-spoken, but your words. <laughs> oh man, come on. <laughs> <laughs> I hope not to see you tomorrow. <laughs> That's not gentle. I'm seeing an alarm. Clear? Ephesians chapter 4, verse 26, it says, When you are angry, don't let that anger make you sin. And don't, don't stay angry all day. Nagalit ka lang sa umaga hanggang pag uwi mo, galit ka pa rin. <laughs> Mahal po ang gamot pang high blood. <laughs> Amen? Life is short, live it well. Don't be angry all day. Even those who don't didn't do anything to you, damay-damay na this. <laughs> Amen? <laughs> Bakit ka galit? Naunahan ka lang sa metro, hindi ka nakapasok. <laughs> Sabi ko, hello! Sige, 
ba yan? Amen. Don't be angry all day. And when you are angry, don't sin. If you know that when your mouth opens and you are so angry, let that anger pacify first. Amen. Don't also shout in the office. Ah! They can't be pacified! No, no, I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> but have an, have an area where you can just express it. Amen. Do you want to talk to someone who you trust? Just let it out, vent out. Because the danger of a pressure cooker, the pressure is inside. And the moment you don't release the steam, there are people who are pressure cooker, no? They try to be just, and then but you don't release the anger. <laughs> Ephesians 4.27, it says, don't be angry all day. So when you are angry, you are giving away for the devil to defeat you. Yeah. Let's read it from the message version. It says, Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh. This is biblical, ah. Go ahead. Be angry. be angry. It's okay. You do well to be angry, but don't use your anger as fuel for revenge. Amen. 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 You can be angry, but don't use it for revenge. Hindi ka papay, hindi siya masaktan. Hindi yun physical, ha? Pero yung words mo, grabe siya. And don't stay angry. Don't go to bed angry. Ang hirap matulog na gali. Tulog ka na nga, nakasimangap ka. <laughs> have you slept that like you have slept a long time but you were harboring anger or <laughs> nananasan yun na yung tulog na hindi ka nakapahinga true yun at night shift ka na sila and I mean you have slept but you don't have peace when you woke up you're still tired you're still angry natulog siyang galit kasi siya galit pero siya sana ba yun <laughs> <laughs> and the older brother, even though he was working for his father, he has issues with anger. His anger was triggered by the party. True. party. Why? Why? Because if you remember, in the beginning of in the, in the beginning of the story of the prodigal son, the word of the Lord said, and then the father distributed the portion between the older brother and the younger brother. Technically, does the father still own anything? Nothing. 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 The share of the older, bro younger brother was already given. No, nagpaparty si tatay sang galing. Amen. Who would not be angry? He was so. This is not fair. Orphans are angry people. They get triggered easily because they think. <laughs> I have been abused. <laughs> I have been overlooked. <laughs> Ako yung nagtanim. Iba ang kumati. Amen. Are you still ready for more? Amen. Number three. Orphan spirit pushes people in isolation. Huh? The first sign was, he's religious. He does not have a relationship with his father. The second, he became angry. I don't have a relationship with you. I'm angry. After he's angry, he said he would not go into the party. Pasok niyo ko. Ay! Ayos ang mga. Papapilit! Ay! Always remember this. Nobody rejected him. Nobody told him not to come. He rejected himself. Nobody told him that he is prevented from coming in. Mm. But because he has these internal issues of an orphan spirit, he doesn't want to come. Mm. It was his pride and self-entitlement that stopped him from going in a community. You know you, will have a, you know you will have an orphan spirit if you don't like people because you always think people are talking against you. Hindi ka naman nila kilala. Ayoko nang bumalik dun sa simbahan na yun. Ako yung pinag-uusapan ng pastor sa pulpit. Sis, first time mo ka, sis. Amen. It creates the false idea that people don't love me. Orphans, wait, are those people na, I want to be in a place where I just want to be loved. 
People love you. Nobody's rejecting you, but you cannot find that you are loved. Not because you are not loved, but because you have an orphan spirit. Amen. People love you. They extend themselves to you, but you cannot appreciate it. And you go around saying, "Don't go to the church. They don't. They only give water to others." <laughs> My share. It's all patatas. There's no. <laughs> Amen, church. Amen. It may be funny, but let us not have that. Nung birthday ni ano, may pag-reach sila sa Facebook. Birthday ko, oh, PM lang. <laughs> Orphan? Orphan ka, girl. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Because there's a party, no? <laughs> Amen. You feel like people don't like you, people are criticizing you, people are talking behind you. Don't create your own paranoia. Right? You would become so paranoid. Like, si sis busy lang, hindi ka lang nabati, ayaw mo na. Amen? Nalagpasan ka. Yung altar ko, luhod siya, sobrang niyang iha kasi nasaktan siya, hindi siya nabati ni sis. Babatiin niyo. Babatiin niyo. Orphan spirit. Rebuke it. Amen? Orphan spirit constantly lives in isolation. They find it difficult to open up. But the other thing, there are also people that they are really good being alone. Uh, but solitude is different from isolation. Uh, solitude is different from isolation. It's a different thing. What is solitude? Solitude, listen to this, is the state of being alone but not lonely. Uh, uh, amen? You may not be isolated. You are in solitude. Uh, amen? Hashtag <laughs> But here again, okay? Because isolation, how does isolation differ from, from solitude? Isolation, you are alone, and then you begin to create stories in your head. That because I'm alone, ako na lang pinag-uusap na ito. That's isolation. But solitude, you have peace. You have joy. Amen. Because you don't anchor your joy to others. Amen. Amen. Isolation depletes you. You would not go into a life group of a fellowship because you're afraid of a community. Yeah. Masasaktan lang ako ng mga yun. Ma-offend lang ako. True. But no offense. Choose love. Amen. Isolation. Mamaya. <laughs> Isolation is not God's plan. Remember doubting Thomas? Yes. Let's read what happens to people who isolate. Yes, yes. In John, <laughs> let me just give an interactive one. In John chapter twenty verse twenty-four, one of the twelve disciples, Thomas called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. Nag-isolate ang kuya to ang kuya Thomas mo. So the other disciples told him. We have seen the Lord. They were so happy. Jesus is alive. And Thomas was not there to witness it. So Thomas said to them, mm, Unless I see the scars of the nails in his hands and put my finger in those scars and my hand in his side, I will not believe. Why did he doubt? What started his doubt? He was not there. He was not there. True. Amen. He had that isolated feeling. Because you know what? Doubts get magnified and amplified in the presence of isolation. Amen. You will start doubting. Because you are isolating yourself. In Proverbs chapter 18, verse 1, I love the message version where it says, Loners who care only for themselves is fit on the common good. Speed. Loners. They don't want to be in a community. What does the Amplified Version say? He who willfully separates himself from God and man, seeks his own desire, he quarrels against all sound wisdom. Who voluntarily or willfully separates himself 
from God and man. Lord, whenever I'm in the community, I'm just hurt. I'm judged. So, it's just between you and me. Diretso na lang ako sa Lord. Diretso tayo na lang talaga. Wow. But that's not the design of God for community. You are designed to be in a relationship, in a community, in a fellowship. Amen. Tell the person next to you, you are designed to be in a As Christians, we are meant to live in a community. Amen? Why? In Matthew 18, 19, what does it say? Again, I say to you that if two believers on earth agree, that is, are of one mind, in harmony, about anything that they ask within the will of God, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, meeting together as my followers, I am there among them. Wag kang emo. Amen? Don't be emo. Because even the word of the Lord says, when two or three are gathered together, there I am. Amen. In their midst. So that is telling us that that is really the sign of God for us. Ecclesiastes chapter 4 verse 12, what does it say? And the one who is alone, 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 who is Amen. You are not meant to be alone. An orphan spirit loves isolation. To sulk in his pity party, hurting him own, his own self. Just because he's in doubt. That's an orphan spirit. Number four. An orphan spirit carries a sense of entitlement, unfairness, demand, and control. As what I have said, the father already divided his properties to two. The father had no more property. The father threw a party for the prodigal son using the older son's property. This made the older son very angry. When his father talked to him, when his father said, son, you have to come, what did he say? But he said to his father, look. Did he call him father? No. Look. His name is Luke. <laughs> he said, look. For all these years, I have worked for you. I have worked like a slave for you. I have always done what you told me to do. And you never gave me even a young goat for a party with my friends. It shows that the orphan spirit, even though he's a son, he did not address his father as father. Because the relationship was not there. And he even said, for all these years, I have worked like a slave for you. He sees himself slave, not a son. And he said, I have always done what you told me to do. And that is a very difficult thing that you tell to your father or you tell God. I have always and I never. Some of us, we thought we have always and never. I have always done this, God. I have never, ever in my life did anything to hurt you. How dare you get that goat and kill it to my, for my brother. The older brother felt he earned it. I deserved it. I worked for it. He was so outraged because he felt like he was deprived of what he deserved. This culture that we have right now, hashtag deserve mo yan, is a very dangerous culture. Because when you think you deserve it, because you earned it and you worked hard for it, there will be a sense of Entitlement. He was so outraged because he was deprived. Entitled people have a problem, have a problematic perception. You know what? Christianity is never about entitlement. Christianity, let me have let me give you good news. We are never entitled. Amen. You know, as Christians, there's only one thing we're entitled. We are entitled to go to heaven. That's the only thing you deserve. Amen. Amen. And then, in this time, we're always injected the idea we deserve good, you deserve better, you deserve to have fun. Mm -hmm. Let us be reminded that we don't deserve it. Mm -hmm. Because of all the sins that we have done, 
the only entitlement that you should have is to be sent to hell because of sin. You know what? Some will say, why? Do, and they will tell God, why do bad things happen to good people? I have never seen that. Bad things happening to good people. Are we really good? No. Are we really good? No. You know what? It happened only once. In the history of mankind, it will only happen once. That something bad happened to a good person. And he volunteered. He volunteered. That the only person who was good, who that a bad thing happened to him. But for us, don't be entitled. I am so blessed with one of the, I am so blessed also with this church, that you don't own a seat. Never own a seat in church. Because um, I, one, of the, one of the invites from this morning said, when she came in, she asked, where can I sit? And I think it was one of the emails said, you can sit anywhere. Because that was new to her. Why? Because I said, in our church in the Philippines, somebody owns a, seat, a chair. And you cannot just sit anywhere. Sometimes it happens in the Philippines. You own a chair. Nobody can sit in that chair. Only you. But I praise God because in this church, we are willingly giving up our seats Amen. to go to the overflow. Amen. Because we are not entitled. That's why it's also this afternoon service is so good. So that you experience those what the others have experienced. That you sit in a chair. You are here not looking at the TV or looking at my head. <laughs> Amen? Amen? Because that's what you see there. He felt offended. It is not fair. I was the one who worked hard and he's getting the party. It is not fair. Someone is getting that instead of me. It is not fair. I am not treated properly. Let us renew our mindset because even Jesus who deserves the entitlement did not feel entitled at all. He did not demand honor. He gave honor. He did not demand to be served, but he served. Tell the person next to you, get rid of entitled. Get rid of entitled. Amen. The older brother suddenly wanted to control his father by refusing to go in. How did it restart? He felt entitled because he felt it was unfair. You know what he was doing? He was trying to control his father. Mm. I will not go into that party unless you stop that party. Mm. I will not go home. Mm. Because this is manipulative spirit. Mm. If that person is still there in church, I will not come back. Mm. Mm. That's control. And that's an orphan spirit. Amen? Get rid of entitlement. Performance-based. That is orphan spirit. Finds the value in the works rather than in the heart. That's an orphan spirit. Remember Mary and Martha? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Martha was in the kitchen. But we praise the Lord for the life of the kitchen ministry here. True. Because we don't want you to be Martha. That's why you have afternoon service. We are all Marys. Ah. Amen. Amen. Because of course, if nobody would be there, then all of us will be hungry. True. We praise God for all those people. So let's give them a clap of praise. Yeah all those people who have sleepless nights just cooking that's why indeed god's plan is wonderful the service is for all of us for our Amen. Amen. so that we also get to be fed always remember this anak ka hindi ka katulog Amen. Amen. you serve kasi anak ka Amen. hindi dahil katulog Amen. 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 number five an orphan spirit gets jealous when others are promoted. <laughs> ah. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Orphan spirit focuses on what I did than who I am. Remember this? He never addressed his father, father. But what did he say? Look, I worked for you. I never ever disrespected you. I never even, I never, I never rejected any of your commands. I did this, I did this. He was boasting on what he did than who he was. True. The father reminded him that he is a son. The father did the father when he was saying all this drama and almost tears will come down on his eyes. And he would just go, but look son, he did not even comment. 
True. That, wow, you did good. But what he reminded him is that he is a son. True. He was calling attention to his works, his activities, his goodness, his service. He thought that the father would have been impressed by his activities. He thought that his goodness deserved to be blessed. The only attachment a spiritual orphan has to the father is based on what they do rather than who they are in him. Orphan spirit always sees what others got and not what they have received. Sometimes we get to see if you have an orphan spirit, if someone who deserves less gets more than you. Let me say that again. You will know you will have an orphan spirit if you feel bad, if someone who deserves less gets more. Mm. That ugly feeling comes up. Unfair. Why, Lord? Am I not good enough? Mm. May kulang papa. Ginawa mm. ko naman lahat. Mm. At the end of the service, people are there. Okay. Okay, let's have now a testimony. Oh, somebody stood. Uh, I was invited last Friday, I received Jesus as Sunday, I received Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. And then now I have a job. Tapos yung anim na buwan nang nag-aating, wala pa rin trabaho. My Lord, he got visa, he got promoted. I'm just asking for a job, not even a promotion. And he would mass it. <laughs> sana all now I realize sana all has not a good connotation to it sana all it's really like saying but hindi ako right because when somebody is blessed say congratulations sana blessing na nga yun gusto mo din ikaw did you get me that's a hard because what what the what the what the elder son was not able to see was that that was just a goat for crying out loud. I gave you the farm, remember? I just got one goat, and here you are crying over the goat. <sighs> na na dagdagan na naman sahod niya. Ikaw hindi parin sumasahod ang <laughs> I praise God for the bonus. I praise God for the increment. Nagluluto ako dito. Pagod na pagod na pagluto. Tate Marie. But if you don't feel bad, praise God for it. That's why you have to control that spirit. So we celebrate because we are a family. Amen. Ito ba? And now I am engaged. Wow! Engaged! I don't know. I don't know. I don't you said to, I live holy life. <laughs> Lord, I enrolled in Lord University. I come to the morning. I come to the afternoon, Lord. I... God, limang taon na ako dito. <laughs> I vacuumed the floor. They said, when you vacuum, you get to me. Ilang palit na ng carpet, Lord. <laughs> Mula 204, nagpapakim na ako. And then, why? If you feel that, I'm not in the mood. But God is exposing something. Ay, dapat pa rin minabago yun. You should change that heart. Learn how to celebrate the party of others. Amen. Remember Saul? You remember Saul? He had everything. The word of the Lord says Saul was the tallest. He looks like a king. He was good looking. He had a kingdom. But 1 Samuel 18. As they were coming home, 
When David returned from killing the Philistine, the woman came out of all of the cities of Israel, singing and dancing to meet King Saul with tambourines. Wow, and Saul was like, <laughs> Next verse. The women sang as they played and dancing. Saul has slain his thousand and David his ten thousands. <laughs> <laughs> Next. Next verse. Pride, pride, pride. Then Saul became very angry, for this saying displeased him. And he said, They have ascribed to David ten thousands, but to me they have ascribed only thousand. Now what more can he have but the kingdom? Kunin mo nang lahat sa yun na, David. Galing mo, you know? Can you imagine that? He felt, oh, people are praising me. Suddenly, David at the bank, just walk in. For David, 10,000, you, 1,000. <laughs> <laughs> oh, His orphan spirit was... Right? You now now understand what the anger that they feel. If you are an orphan, if you are an orphan, but the good thing is you're not offended. Because there's blessing to those people who don't get offended even though how offending the situation may be. He felt so jealous because he believes he deserves that. I deserve that. Always remember this. Someone's blessing is always going to be your test. Someone's blessing is always going to be your test. In in Bisaya, we have the term masinahon. <laughs> What's that in English? Tagalog ay nila. Pumalang sakit sa Tagalog. Gitir. Gitir. I remember this. Every blessing is a test, and every test is a blessing. Sometimes we are tested not by our own blessings. But when others are blessed with the blessing that we feel entitled to. How can that be? I could have put you in the pyramid. And you still. <laughs> but then again, oh, you remember this. The, 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 the older son did not did, forgot one thing. There was a party. He can eat at that party. When somebody from this place, in this church, gets to celebrate, you are part of that celebration. Amen. Why are you crying? But you still get to go to the buffet people and eat. Because you are family. Amen. Amen. Rebuke the orphans. Sa time ng testimony, gustuhin mo mang magsalita, wala naman akong ma-share. Pero ang mga bago, agad-agad sinasagot ang prayers. Why? How do you deal with that? If you are able to let go of the entitlement, then we will be able to deal with the jealousy. If you don't feel entitled, you don't feel jealous. Because you know, that whatever you receive is from the Lord, not because you earned it, not because you deserved it, because God is gracious. And if you would remember, the first murder, what, what was the first murder in the Bible? Cain. Cain killed whom? Abel. Abel. Because of what? Jealousy. Jealousy. This is what happened. Genesis 4. Time passed. Cain brought an offering to God from the produce of his farm, Abel also brought an offering, but from the firstborn animals of his Lord heard choice cuts of meat. God liked Abel in his offering, but Cain and his offering didn't get his approval. Cain lost his temper and went into a sulk. God spoke to Cain, I love this version, why this tantrum? It's just a tantrum. You're not a kid. Don't go having tantrum party. <laughs> Why the sucking? If you do well, won't you be accepted? And if you don't do well, sin is lying in, in, in wait for you, ready to pounce. It's out to get you. You've got to master it. Let me tell you a harsh truth, church. God loves us equally. Amen. Amen. 
but trusts us differently. God loves us equally, but rewards us differently. And you should be okay with that. You should be okay with that. Let go of the entitlement and jealousy. Repent and trim off that sense of resentment regularly. Cut it off. Because remember this, someone's promotion will expose your silent frustration with that. The sad thing is, as long as others are broke, you are fine. If you pray until you work, I feel you. Nung na bless na siya. Bakit siya? Ito ba pinag-pray mo? As long as they're miserable, I'm praying for you. But silently, I'm glad. Sa ako yung buhay ko. When that feeling comes up, go to God. Be honest of what you feel. Because I don't tell you to invalidate it. If you feel that, go to God. You know what, God? I feel this. But Lord, can you take this away? Can you take away this feeling of being jealous over other people's blessing? Amen? Number six. We're almost there. Orphans cannot access their inheritance. You can have everything, but you cannot use anything. That's a sad part. He kept waiting for the father to give him a goat when the father had already given him a farm. Wow. In, the old, in reality, the older son was living in poverty while in the presence of royalty. Kasi hindi niya makita. Yung blessing, nasa kanya na. Umiiyak siya sa kambing na hindi pinahanda sa kanya. Kambing lang pala gusto mo. Magkaldereta ka. How many goats do you have in the farm? Why do you cry over something for your younger brother? So how do we overcome an orphan spirit? It's just quick. Number one, build a relationship with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Build a relationship with the Holy Spirit. Jesus said to his disciples that he will not leave them orphans. He will send them the Holy Spirit. When you don't build an intimacy with the Holy Spirit, you are opening yourself to an orphan spirit. Choose the spirit that you want to allow to come into your life. The Holy Spirit or the orphan spirit. Because sooner or later, you will feel offended, then entitled, and then angry, and then jealous. The cure to, the, to entitlement is an encounter with the Holy Spirit. Because if you know that your ultimate goal is a relationship with the, uh, with the Holy Spirit, everything else will just become a bonus. True. Increment? Bonus lang yun. Mapangasawa yung tall, dark, and handsome. Bonus na lang yun. <laughs> it's not your main goal. Because if it becomes your main goal, then you would become jealous of other people's blessing. But if your main goal is to have a relationship with the Holy Spirit, you are fine even with, with or without the other bonuses that comes along with it. Number two, renew your mind of what God says about you. It should always be what God says about you and not what you feel about yourself. Amen? The father always addressed the older son as son. But the older son never called him father. Even at the end of the story. He lost the perspective of who he was. He cannot find himself as a son. And how did he call his brother? He did not call him his brother, right? He called him, And that son of yours, in Tagalog, Yung anak mo, kapatid niya naman yun. <laughs> but he did not see that relationship. He kept bragging on him being a worker and not being a son. He found pride in his work rather than his sonship. When others are getting promoted, blessed, and are getting ahead of you, you should be okay with that. Amen. Rewire your mind. This is not about the bonus. I am still a son. Amen. I am still a daughter, still a daughter of God. I am still a child of God. Because God focuses more on your being rather than your doing. He cares more about who you are than what you do for Him. But I am also not telling you magpakatamad ko, ka naman ministry. Kasi nga anak ka, kaya ka naman ministry. That is why the father did not compliment the older brother for being a good worker. He focused on him being a son. At least remember this. No matter how hard you work, 
your work cannot make you somebody else's son. Right? Magtrabaho ka maglahat, si Lester lang talaga anak ni Pastora. <laughs> Amen? Amen. Pastora, po ang buhay ko na ang dugo. <laughs> eh, hindi ka nga anak. <laughs> Amen? You can never buy sonship. Amen? Amen? You can never earn sonship. Sonship is given to you. True. That's why, don't think, ah, nagmi-ministry, pihing siya kay Lord, see this? <laughs> okay na ba? <laughs> you don't do that to be approved. Amen. You do that because you are already approved. Amen. 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 Nagtatrabaho ako kasi anak ako is different from nagtatrabaho ako para maging anak ako. Amen. Romans 8.15 For you have not received a spirit of slavery yes. leading again to fear of God's judgment but you have received the spirit of adoption as sons the spirit you, producing sonship by which we joyfully cry Abba Father Always remember no. 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 You are no, no longer a slave Made the declaration, I am a child of God. I am a child of God. I am no longer a slave. Amen? Almost there. Hold on. My party at us, okay, I'm going to Number three. Number three. Don't let your food get cold by constantly looking at someone else's plate. Don't let your food get cold by constantly looking at someone else's plate. Stop comparing with others. True. Amen. 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 Pastor, the grass is greener on oh. the other side of the fence because they water it. True. Yours will not be greener by looking at theirs. True. Start watering yours so that it will be green. Amen. Pastor, siya kasi lagi na lang nabibliss. Eh kasi painful siya mag tides. Gusto mo blessing lang, walang tides tides. <laughs> Kung gusto mo din yung blessing niya, tanungin mo, paano to be you? Hindi, sana all. <laughs> Amen? Amen? 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 12. Not that we dare to classify or compare ourselves with some of those who are commending themselves, but when they measure themselves by one another and compare themselves with one another, they are without understanding. Don't compare your blessing to others. Don't compare your gifts to others. Don't compare because you have been rewarded differently. The only pers person you should compare yourself with is you yesterday. Are you a better person today? Are you a more Christ-like person today? Because you know what? I have a news. It would be very depressing for a bird to be a fish. Yeah? True. It would be very depressing for a bird to be a fish because he was not designed that way. True. That's why, church, be you. Be you. Tell the person next to you, be you. Be you. Don't copy somebody else. Amen? Don't copy somebody else. Because I have another news for you. You will always be the worst version of someone else. Yeah? You will always be the worst version of someone else. If a Kuya Roman will leave, we will not wait for another Kuya Roman because that's Kuya Roman. Yes. Because if you copy him with all your energy, na himatay ka na, hindi ko pa rin nagagawa. <laughs> Siya na nagagawa, pinapaikot at maghihilo na tayo. Sunod naman tayo. <laughs> but that's him. You have different anointing. Be you. Look at your own plate. I may not have the goat, but I have the farm. Wow. Amen. Declare that. I may not have the goat, but I have the farm. Amen. So be grateful rather than being jealous. Sa Lord yan, walang sin. So. Number four. Let go of an offended heart. No offense. Choose love. Let go of entitlement. Yes. Stop fighting for fairness. Yes. Pastor, it's not fair. Ako yung nagpakahirap. It's not fair. You are not called for fairness. Let me give you that as a news. The Lord did not create you for fairness. He created you for favor. True. Yung goal mo lang maging fair, ang goal ng Lord sa'yo, paboran ka. Not just to be 
fair. You may get the fairness. Let's see. Lord, I want it to be fair. Let's say you get the fairness, but one day, then you're okay. And then one day, someone receives the favor, you will be angry again. Correct. So, pray for the favor rather than the fairness. Amen. Because almost all who receive God's favor went through a season of unfairness. True. Remember David? David, he was not even selected by his father to come to the prophet. Until the prophet said, we have other sons. What would you feel? Okay, ikaw, 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 dito. Tay, ako po. Assuming din to, bata ka pa, oh. He was not even part of the option. To some, we would say, option lang ako si David nga, kahit option, hindi siya kasali. True. He could have been offended. But because he did not, he became the king. True. Kaya pala hindi ka nagiging hari, na-open ka lagi. Kaya na pala open. Amen? <laughs> Remember Joseph? He could have been offended nung kinalimutan siya nung cupbearer. Grabe, sabi niya, di niya kakakalimutan. After ilang taon, tsaka mo lang ako naalala kasi na nag-inip naman yung hari. <laughs> he could have been offended, but he did not. He became the governor of Egypt. Yes. Si Ruth, namatay na ng asawa at lahat. It's unfair. Si Ruth. Pero, there was a boa sweet. Eh. When you feel like it's so unfair right now, Boas is coming. Boas is coming. Tell the person I see Boas. Remember Esther? Esther was. Boas talaga yung topic. Esther, she was an orphan. Life seems to be unfair. But because she refused to be offended, she became the queen. You know what a promotion killer is? Offense. If you want to be promoted, let go of offense. There are two types of offended people. Those who have been mistreated and those who think they have been mistreated. Those who have been mistreated and those who think they have been mistreated. By Number five. Almost there. Almost there. Explore your inheritance by encountering God. The secret to getting your inheritance is that. Encounter God. Second Peter one three says, "Can we read together?" What does what did he grant? All things. All things. When we say all, it's all. Oh, it's very deep. That pertain to life and godliness. So the all that he meant is not just for your worldly life, even for your godliness through. The knowledge of Him who called us to His own glory and excellence. So let's break that. If because it's already available, the, even the word said it's already granted. All things have been granted through the knowledge of Him who called us to His own glory. So the key to your blessing is your knowledge of God. If the brother, if the older brother knew that the father is his father, he knows that he already has everything. Amen. You can access your inheritance by knowing God and not just by knowing Amen. your inheritance. Because the 11.32 says, But the, but people, the people, people who know, know their God, God shall be strong and carry out great exiles. And lastly, as we close, redefine your win. Go from winning in life to winning people. The older son was too focused on accumulating stuff. The father's success was winning his son. He had his two sons, his fine. But the older brother, he just, he felt like nalugi ako na isang kambing na yung kambing. The older brother's success was on getting a goat. The father's success was on getting his son back. Are we obsessed with people getting saved? Or are we more obsessed with our personal ambitions in life? The older son, the goat, was the goal. Yun lang talagang umiiyak niyang kambing na yan. To the father, the goat was the means to the goal. The goat was not the goal. The older son got the father's money, but not the father's mindset. 
The older son got the father's valuables, but not his father's value system. The older son had his inheritance, but he did not have his father's heart. He had his possession, but not his passion. Because when the younger brother came back, instead of celebrating, he was crying because he did not get a goat. Don't cry over goat, church. You are not an orphan. You are not having an orphan spirit. So as we stand and minister, let's be singing one song. It's called Jaira. It says, God is more than enough. Amen? Because God is indeed more than enough. Let's be worshiping the Lord. According to the book of Ephesians chapter 4 verses 11 to 12 says, Now, these are the gifts Christ gave to the church, the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and teachers. Their responsibility is to equip God's people to do His work and build up the church, the body of Christ. Brothers and sisters, please meet our pastors, starting with the Lord Reigns in All Nations Ministry Founding Pastor, Senior Pastor Rico Gonzalez. We have the Senior Pastor of Lorian Ministry. Let's meet Senior Pastor Lalen Reblando. Please also meet the Associate Pastor of Lorian Ministry, Pastor John Nilvic Valentino, Pastor Chris John Taro, Resident Pastor of Lorian Dubai Chapter, Pastor Romaine Posadas of Lorian Dubai Chapter, Pastor Ninito Esteban, Resident Pastor, Lorian Sharjah Chapter Pastor Doris Arandela of Lorian Sharjah Chapter Pastor Joseph Pan Resident Pastor, Lorian Adjman Pastor Crispina Tan Pastor of Lorian Adjman Brothers and sisters in Christ, every believer must be a worker of God. As the Bible says on Luke chapter 1 verse 74, we have been rescued from our enemies so we can serve God without fear. While we understand that there are many ways to serve God every day, but serving God in a more intimate way can make your journey as His followers more fulfilling. Having said that, we would like to encourage that Christian believer in you. Not just to worship God regularly, but to offer more of what you have for God's glory. How? Well, here's the good news. You can serve God more closely by devoting your time, talent, or skills through our ministry. Let me walk you through the ministries that we have in our church and see where God is calling you to channel your blessings. As Jesus expected his followers to fast, and God rewards fasting, we have the prayer and fasting ministry. And you are very much welcome here, for we believe that a prayerful church is a powerful church. Next, we have the missions ministry, who reaches out to places to share God's word. Since God is the fountain of sending love. We also have the speed ministry or the evangelism ministry who embodies our mission and that is it is our call to go and make disciples. Also we have the finance ministry who is in charge of monitoring our church finances. Speaking of finances, let us pray that we may be faithful stewards in the things that we have been entrusted with. For our brothers who are married and want to spend their energy in empowering their manhood or fatherhood for God, we have the Eagles Ministry, which stands for Empowered Anointed 
godly leaders and saints. For married women in our church, we also have the Wings Ministry, or the Women in God's Service. This is the ministry for women looking for hope and inspiration. Together, we will learn to build a flourishing, Christ-focused women's ministry. For our brothers and sisters who are single, we have the SALT ministry, or the Singles Abiding in Light of Truth. And of course, we have the Kids Ministry, who keeps the youth of our church develop a more open relationship with God in this contemporary world. If you have a love for music, we have Praise and Worship Ministry for you. You may join our Hamic Ministry, or honoring God in music and making it glorious where you can sing your love for God for the world to hear. Also, under Praise and Worship Ministry, we have the Tambourine Ministry, a ministry dedicated to our members who plays tambourine instrument that brings swirls of shine during our worship service. We also have members under Media Ministry, who is in charge of our church's social media and other media platforms. We also have brothers and sisters who are in charge of coordinating the schedule and details of our services, and they are the worship coordinators. Of course, we are familiar with our fellow Christians who greets and leads us to our seats during fellowship. We have the ushering ministry. We also have the transport ministry who takes care of our church's transportation needs. Lastly, we have the events ministry who is assigned in taking charge of our church events and activities all year long. As we go through the day, let us seek God's voice on how He wants to use our commitment to Him and everything else that we have in making His plans possible. Joining our ministry will not only keep you closer to God, but is indeed very rewarding. Use your gift to serve God. Share the work of your hands and serve others with love. Be an instrument of God's love the best way you can. And if this is you today, please let us know. We would love to hear from you. Thank you and God bless us all. Thank you for joining us today at Lorian. We are so grateful we could worship together in spirit and in truth. Let's see each other next week and we can't wait to gather with you again. As we leave today, we pray Ephesians chapter 3 verses 20 to 21 over you today and this week. Now all glory to God, who is able through His mighty power to work within us, to accomplish indefinitely more than we might ask or think. Glory to Him in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Make it a great week, brothers and sisters, and have a blessed day.